This is part 5 of 100 common sense financial hacks you should do. In this video, I will show you another 20 steps you can take toward your financial goals. 1. Portfolios. Once you start to invest, you should review your portfolio on an annual basis. You need to ensure your investments still match your goals. 2. Accounts. As tempting as it may be to leave your savings in your checking account, don't. If you can see it, then you will probably spend it. 3. Different banks. If you want to make sure you can't touch your savings, open an account at a different bank. It's far too easy to transfer money between two accounts with the same bank. Remove temptation. 4. Direct deposits. If you can set up an automatic payment, then do it. Whether it's for your savings or your bills. It's especially important for your savings, though. You don't want to forget to move your savings one month and miss out. 5. Your financial emergencies. Your rainy day fund wasn't intended to pay for a wedding. If you were planning a wedding, then create a separate savings fund for it. A true financial emergency will include auto troubles, home expenses, funerals, medical emergencies, or a job loss. 6. Renter's insurance. Natural disasters, burglaries, vandalism, whatever it is, you need renter's insurance. Many of these will also cover you in the event of someone getting injured on your property or damages that you cause to someone else's property. 7. Repayment options. If you already took out a federal loan and you're struggling with your repayments, then contact your lender. They have plenty of options available to make payments easier. 8. Fees. When you do decide to invest, make sure you know the fees. Expense ratios can seriously eat into returns, so the best move is to take advice from professionals before you invest. 9. Credit unions. They might not be the right move for everyone, however, they tend to offer better interest rates on loans and savings accounts. 10. Experience life. What will bring you more happiness? That fancy coffee machine or a once-in-a-lifetime concert? Memories are more valuable than material goods. So, make wise decisions. 11. Quality over quantity. When you make decisions about clothing, think long-term. For example, you may have to pay more for a basic item of clothing, but it's going to provide you with more value in the long run. So, that shirt that ticks the trendy boxes might be cheaper now, but how long will it last? This also extends to gadgets, toys, and beyond. 12. Too much savings? Is there such a thing? There is if you haven't made any investments. The ultimate goal is a full 12 months of savings. Beyond that, you should be seriously considering some investments. 13. Save now. Don't put savings off. Start now, even if it's just $10. 14. Solo shopping trips. If you know your friend always pushes you to make purchases you can't afford or don't need, don't go shopping with them. You can either go on solo shopping trips or, you can invite a friend you know is a stickler with money. 15. Shop realistically. This is twofold. First of all, shop for the current you. If you plan to lose weight, don't buy a smaller size for later. Either avoid shopping altogether or simply buy clothing that fits you now. Also, don't shop for someone you aren't. For example, you don't need a full set of triathlete workout gear for basic exercise. 16. FAFSA If it's you or your child, make sure they fill out a FAFSA form. You might not think there's aid available to you, but you won't know unless you ask. There are Pell Grants available, which do not need to be repaid, and over a million students miss out on them every year. All because they don't file a FAFSA. 17. Federal, Private 
For student loans, the federal always trumps private. The federal loans on offer have more flexible terms for repayment, which is especially important if your career doesn't pan out how you plan it to. They also offer better interest rates. 18. Retirement Savings Boost When you get a raise, use it to increase your savings for retirement. 19. Credit Utilization Rate Divide your total debt by the total of your available credit. Your use of credit should remain less than 30% of your available credit. Why? Your credit score. 20. Secured Credit Cards Do you have terrible credit that you're trying to recover? A secured credit card can help. You can't overspend, you don't need good credit to get one, and you can rebuild your credit. As always, this video is for educational purposes only and not financial advice. You should always do your own research and speak to a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching us and see you in the next one.